Okay, this is a standard three-part mold. You got a top, a bottom, and the middle. And the middle's the mold part. So we've got this cut out, and this for nine coils. They're going to be cast individually. You might have seen that in the other video. I got parchment paper, and I got a cook sprayed it with cooking spray. And now this part is going to sit down over. Wind up. It's going to sit down over top of the bottom here, and then I'll line this, and then I'll be ready just to cast each individual coil. Got the sides all greased up. Got the sheet of fiberglass in there. Put the coils in there, and then we're going to pour the resin in. Put another sheet of fiberglass on top, and then clamp it down. All cast. I used uh, carriage bolts and these clamps that came off with some exercise equipment so that I could tighten this down real well. So you see as I tightened it, it leaked out through the little groove I left for uh, the wires. So <clears throat> should be good. Just got to let it dry and I use quite a bit of the hardener so I wouldn't have to wait that long. It only ended up taking three cups that size to fill in all the, loot, the little areas around the coils and through the coils. Got all the casting cleaned up and uh, mounted. So what I'm going to have here is uh, the ins and outs for each phase. So I could wire it in star or delta. Um, and later on if I if it does get hot, which it shouldn't go, get hot with a coil shorting. I can replace these plates with stainless steel, and because these are cast in resin, that should be a, sufficient to run the generator without any uh, any problem here. So I use the pattern to make sure these are perfectly aligned with the plate, which is this right here. So you can see here the magnets are going to run perfectly in the middle of those uh, it's kind of hard to see because it's at an angle but it should be a problem the magnets are going to sit in here so you should line up perfectly with that I uh, just got to mount the shaft and uh, put the resin in these and clamp these down and put the bolts in this tomorrow and hopefully in the next couple days I'll have the generator done okay I'm in the final stages of the build here on uh, the PMG or dynamo if you want to call it a dynamo um, everything's just kind of loosely screwed together I'm verifying this spacing is accurate and it is exactly where I need it to be if you can see right there's the core which is just wood with resin on it um, the spacing is perfect so uh, this is it right here um, outs for the three phases all the coil shorting circuitry will be up here along with the a bank of these I've got three banks of these actually I got a lot of these so hopefully this is enough um, where my calculations are coming from on this is when you use an AC motor and you convert it into a um, generator this is what I used and it was capable of making quite a bit of power so I'm gonna stick with this for now Later on, the capacitance might go up. If once I figured out what the coil shorting is capable of, then obviously I want the largest amount of storage I can get because they're going to switch between each phase. And as they dump, I need as much energy possible from each phase for this process to work. Shouldn't get hot. There shouldn't be any heat involved in this. Uh, and we will be able to control the voltage of the output using this circuitry I'm designing. So basically, 
this is it. This is what will go on uh, the motor as the generator. You can see I added connectors back here for the individual phases. Uh, each phase. Right? And I want to show you, I put the plates on um, and the field is this far apart, if you can see, on both sides. And it still has complete control of the other side. Now the field is, as it draws closer to this, it gets, it starts pulling tight up against it. But uh, it's really at the outer limit right there of the magnetic field. Remember the magnet's only a 16th inch thick. So um, I think that's pretty good, actually. If you can see it right there. I'm spinning that plate inside of the other side, but just by moving this side. So, uh, and uh, it's a good inch away from the plate. Now, obviously, the closer these plates are together, the stronger the flux field from one magnet to the other so it's going to put more energy into the coils but uh, I wanted to show you how far away it could be and still affect that um, so that's a good inch away so I wanted to make this smaller too I could use pl uh, uh, stainless steel plates and replace the plastic and that would give me another quarter inch almost so. uh, one other little nugget of information here uh, you can see the back of the magnet extends beyond the blade. Well, that I needed to do that for the coil size, but I'm hoping to use the back of this magnet to trigger a Hall effect sensor because there's only a little of it facing the way, and most of the flux field is drawn to the other magnet. So I'm hoping that I can put a Hall effect sensor somewhere over here and it can trigger on that magnet so if not I've got to add another plate with uh, smaller magnets probably something like I got some cubes and I'd have to put 12 of them in the same pattern as this and then I could trigger the sine wave for each magnet so I wanted you to see that that's kind of a extreme close up there of how it's set up so once the resin's in there this will be sealed up and you won't be able to do this anymore so that's it so that's it I'm ready to take it apart and uh, cast these plates and solder all these connections so um, that's it